Working with machine learning model can be a bit complex, especially when it comes to deploying to the edge with different types of hardware and different types of hardware acceleration. The Onyx Runtime is an open source project that will help you as a developer do exactly that. And we have Manash from the AI Platforms team who is here to tell us everything about Onyx Runtime. Hi everyone, thanks for watching the IoT Show. I'm Olivier, your host, and today with Banash, we will talk about running AI models at the edge on tiny devices and what it takes to do so. Banash, thanks for joining the show. Thank you, Olivier. So you're part of the AI Frameworks team as, as part of the broader AI Platforms team. So can you actually share with the audience who you are, what you do, what your team develops? Okay, thank you. So I am in the AI Platforms organization in Cloud and AI. Uh, our organization is responsible for build a, building the tools and the infrastructure to deliver machine learning at Microsoft. And we have a product called Azure Machine Learning, which is used by third parties. Within that organization, I am in the AI Frameworks group. And specifically, my role is to work with hardware vendors so that we can accelerate neural network models across all of their platforms. And we'll talk about the specific scenarios in the IoT landscape right, of using ML at the edge and how we can make it easier for developers who have that task to run these complex algorithms down there on these tinier devices. Right. So tell me a bit more about Azure ML and the typical machine learning end-to-end -end scenarios. Right. So when you build a machine learning model, there are lots of pieces that need to come together. You need to organize your data. Yep. You need to build a training solution where you build uh, or train your model to, to create the specific uh, model that will meet your application's needs. And then you deploy that okay. model in different hardware endpoints. Mm -hmm. What you see here is all the different pieces that Azure provides. And Azure has services for all of these uh, elements. Mm -hmm. But today, we are going to focus on how we deploy these models on, on edge endpoints yep. with Azure IoT. So Manash, why would you want to run machine learning models at the edge on devices? So when we talk about the intelligent cloud and the intelligent edge, there is a reason intelligent edge becomes important. Mm -hmm. uh, when we are deploying IoT edge on endpoints, we realize a lot of data is generated. Mm -hmm. And the data is currently being ingested into our cloud and we run you know, machine learning analytics or any other application services on the, in the cloud. But as we, as we look at all the different needs around high speed uh, mm -hmm. inferencing yeah. or, you know, reducing the round trip latency for, uh, for the results need, mm -hmm. that need to go back, mm -hmm. as well as the data privacy requirements that, that are evolving. Yeah. All of these require us to push the workload closer to where the data is collected. And that enables us to get richer services deployed on Got the edge. It. Got it. So how do you do that? How do you deploy these machine learning models on the edge? So in Azure ML, as I talked about earlier, we have a lot of solutions for you to build your own models, bring your data, organize it, and run all of the services there. What, what I'm going to show you is how actually we are going to deploy these models on the edge. And the Azure Machine Learning Pipeline allows us to get your trained models, either from an experiment that you ran in yeah. AML, yeah. or from custom vision, or your own model that you may have trained offline, you ingest it into our model registry, mm -hmm. and then we package that into a container. Now these containers are hardware specific. Mm -hmm. So we can deploy these containers in the cloud, yeah. We deploy that into heavy edge gateway type devices mm -hmm. or to light edge devices like uh, you know, the, the neural compute stick or the Jetson Nano okay. that, uh, that I'm going to demonstrate today. Awesome. Looking forward to that. Um, we still need to talk about, you, you just mentioned the fact that the containers are allowed to uh, be specific to the hardware. Uh, but I need to understand a bit better about you know, how do you abstract when you're developing the models and exporting them, how do you abstract this hardware? Uh, and actually, at the end of the day, why have you guys been developing that, um, that project called Onyx Runtime? So, you know, as, as we look at the data science world that has evolved rapidly, and the data scientists use all, all sorts of different tools to build yep. their models. Yep. Now, these models, when they need to be executed, there again is a variety of hardware platforms that you can deploy them in. Mm -hmm. Onyx has become the open ecosystem whereby you can take models from any framework and translate that into a common format. Okay. This enables us to decouple where you have done training mm -hmm. to how you would be doing inferencing. Okay, so Onyx is 
an open format, right? It's not binary. It's, it's basically a way of, of, of formatting whatever you've been training as a model into something that is recognizable you know, wh wherever the source is. Right. So if you take a step back, uh, as I was saying earlier, the reality is that, and this is true even inside Microsoft, mm -hmm. uh, models are developed from different sources and they all look different because they're represented in these, uh, these frameworks like yep. TensorFlow or PyTorch mm -hmm. or, uh, or Keras or, yep. and others. And then when we look at the execution side, we have the heavy edge with say Intel-like processors, Intel and AMD, mm -hmm. or you have got CPUs and GPUs in the cloud, yeah. or you have got custom neural compute sticks like the Movidius, yeah. or you know the Qualcomm uh, processor. These yeah. are all custom silicon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what we have done with Onyx is, we have standardized the model representation into a common format, a graph format, okay. and we have built a uh, runtime called the Onyx runtime, okay. which we have open sourced. And this runtime is the inference engine that executes Onyx models across different hardware endpoints. Awesome. So basically, you produce an Onyx format and a model, like from anywhere, your favorite tool or you, an existing one. And then with the Onyx runtime, you're actually going to be able to run uh, that exactly. model anywhere. Yes. Yes. OK. Yeah. So a little bit about the Onyx runtime yep. itself. So the Onyx runtime, as I said, is open source. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, it has a plugin architecture okay. whereby interf we interface with different types of hardware libraries that say NVIDIA builds or Intel builds or others. And this plugin architecture enables us to take advantage of the underlying hardware mm -hmm. and accelerate the model as it's specified by their hardware. So, so now an app developer writes their code only to Onyx runtime's APIs. Mm -hmm. And the Onyx runtime almost magically is able to optimize it for the target that it's going to be deployed in. Well, so I don't need to care ahead of time as a developer whether I'm going to have a GPU or an NPU or something else or FPGAs, whatnot, to accelerate my model, uh, the inferencing and so on, right? That's right. That's magic. No, it's not right. It's magic. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So what I'm going to show you here today yep. is exactly this mm -hmm. work working. So what I have here is the NVIDIA Jetson Nano, which is a ARM64 uh, device that NVIDIA has built. Yep. Uh, it uses their GPU cores inside, uh -huh. and it's a single chip solution. Yep. And on the other side, and, and I, that one is a dev kit, right? It's, it's a developer kit. You that's can right. find it online. It's pretty cheap, actually, for something that can do that's advanced right. machine learning, yes. right? So this is very similar to the dev kit that we have built for yep. Vision AI. This uh -huh. is based on the Qualcomm Silicon. Got it. So similarly, this NVIDIA one is produced by NVIDIA, mm -hmm. and again uses a custom silicon that they okay. have built. Okay. And then what I have here is the uh, up squared. Mm -hmm. which is using the uh, Intel Atom processor for CPU, okay. but it, is a, it has embedded Movidius chips okay. as the accelerators. And what we have built here is that a tiny YOLO model, mm -hmm. which is about object detection, okay. that model is deployed as a container through IoT Edge okay. to run inferencing. And the, we, we actually use exact same code Mm -hmm. And because of the magic of containers and with IoT Edge, we're yeah. able to deploy the same models okay. across both of them. Okay. So let's quickly switch to, yeah. you know, what's uh, what's running on this on, on this device here. Yeah. So what I'm showing here is is essentially a log file of the up square, okay. and I'm going to run this. Uh, okay, I'm going to run uh, the log here to show what what this model mm -hmm. is spitting out. Yep. And I, I cover this, and you yep. see that this model is going to show that uh, it is able to detect a person, because okay. it is you currently. Obviously, okay. it's showing I out. am a person. Uh, so let me tell you what's going on inside. Yep. So what I have here is my Visual Studio terminal. Mm -hmm. And the, the project that I have here is, uh, is loaded here. Yep. I have got a camera capture module yep. that is capturing the mm -hmm. images from the webcam. Mm -hmm. Then I have a module that is used for inferencing. So here, I'm taking the images that I have captured from my webcam yep. and sending them to the inference module. This is where okay. I'm actually running the Onyx runtime inference okay. engine. And then I have a post-processing module where what I'm doing for the purposes of this tutorial mm -hmm. is taking the result of the inference mm -hmm. and uploading it to a storage blob through the IoT Edge uh, storage blob storage container. Got it. So 
from an ITH developer standpoint, the Onyx runtime comes as a library or comes as a Docker image? So it is encapsulated inside the Docker image Got that it. gets built out of out of this uh, oh, okay. out Got of it. this code, right? So if you look at the Docker file for the inference module, yeah. uh, I have got two different Docker files. I have a Docker file for the AMD64, which mm -hmm. is what's used for the AppSquare, yep. and then I have a Docker file for ARM64. Okay. These Docker files are essentially using different base images to build the, uh, their code. Okay. So this one is built with an image for OpenVINO, mm -hmm. which is used to target the, uh, the Intel VPU that's embedded inside. Okay. And then the ARM one is actually deploying with a base image for the NVIDIA ARM64. Okay. So other than that, all the Python code mm -hmm. that you're using here across all of these are all the same. Got it. And if you're familiar with the uh, deployment mechanism, mechanism in the uh, Visual Studio code, mm -hmm. I essentially have two deployment templates. And depending on the target that I want to deploy to, yep. I essentially generate the deployment manifest, and then I push it to the IoT Edge device that's out there. As easy as that. As easy as that. <laughs> awesome. So, Monash, where uh, we we actually have a link prepared, right? Uh, for, right. for developers to learn more about Onyx, it's going to be aka.ms slash IoT show slash Onyx runtime. Um, the sample you just showed here is going to be available as well from that link. Correct. Right? So we are going to publish this as a tutorial yep. so that uh, developers can take this mm -hmm. and start building their own custom application code, reusing the container images that we have published mm -hmm. so that they don't have to change anything, as I said, on their APIs, yep. and they're going, to, they're going to build once, and you can deploy everywhere awesome. else. So we're discussing that just before recording. I was curious about where is it used today? Who is using the Onyx runtime, uh, and, and is it in production? Is it something that actually is, is robust? That's right. So Onyx runtime is used widely inside Microsoft mm -hmm. across all of our Microsoft first-party services. Okay. So Onyx runtime is used across different model inferencing for Bing. Okay. It is used by Office for some of their online grammar correction okay, yeah. and, and other designer template things. Mm -hmm. It is used in um, a various applications, and we have actually published some numbers at Build yeah. about the performance improvements they have mm -hmm. seen. And these services are revenue-generating, sensitive, time-sensitive services where yeah. they need very, very high uh, stringent performance requirements, and, and they, they, uh, they are using Onyx Runtime RAM. Awesome. Monash, thanks a lot for this insight. Once again, aka.ms slash IoT show slash Onyx Runtime. Thanks for watching the IoT show, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.